वासुदेवाय We are reading chapter 4, Transcendental Knowledge, text number 15. Evam Jnatva Kritam Karma Evam Jnatva Kritam Karma Pūrvairapimumukṣubhi Pūrvairapimumukṣubhi Guru karmai vatasmātvam Guru karmai vatasmātvam Pūrvair pūrvataram kṛtam Pūrvair pūrvataram kṛtam एवं ज्ञाता कृतं कर्मा पूर्वी रतिमुमुक्षुभि गुरु कर्मयि वतस्मात्तम् पूर्वी पूर्वतरं कृतं Purvataram in ancient times Kritam has performed All the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature Therefore you should perform your duty following in their footsteps There are two classes of men. Some of them are full of polluted material things within their hearts, and some of them are materially free. Krishna consciousness is equally beneficial for both of these persons. Those who are full of dirty things can take to the line of Krishna consciousness for a gradual cleansing process, following the regulative principles of devotional service. Those who are already cleansed of the impurities may continue to act in the same Krishna consciousness so that others may follow their exemplary activities and thereby be benefited. Foolish persons or neophytes in Krishna consciousness often want to retire from activities without having knowledge of Krishna consciousness. 
Arjuna's desire to retire from activities on the battlefield was not approved by the Lord. One need only know how to act. To retire from the activities of Krishna consciousness and to sit aloof making a show of Krishna consciousness is less important than actually engaging in the field of activities for the sake of Krishna. Arjuna is here advised to act in Krishna consciousness following in the footsteps of the Lord's previous disciples, such as the sun god Vivaswan, as mentioned herein before. The Supreme Lord knows all his past ac activities, as well as those of persons who acted in Krishna consciousness in the past. Therefore, he recommends the acts of the sun god who learned this art from the Lord some millions of years before. All such students of, Krishna, of Lord Krishna are mentioned here as past liberated persons engaged in the discharge of duties allotted by Krishna. Oma jnana tingranta se jnana anjana shalakaya Chakshurun militam yena tasme shri gurave namaha Vandeham shri guru shri yutapata kamalam shri guru ngaishnavanscha Shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana raghunatham vitam tam sajeevam Sadaitan Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha All the liberated souls in the ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature. Therefore you should perform your duty following in their footsteps. So Srila Prabhupada starts his explanation by speaking of how Krishna consciousness is equally applicable to uh, people who are not pure yet and people who are already pure and liberated. And uh, he's saying the sort of pool of dirty things can take to the line of Krishna consciousness for a gradual cleansing process following the regulative principles of devotional service and then those who are liberated there uh, they are mentioned as uh, acting to set example for those who are not yet liberated hmm. so When does one actually take to devotional service? If we, if you look at the, at the history of jiva in the material world, when does it actually happen? In other words, uh, uh, then uh, comes the question of adhikara, or one's eligibility for Krishna consciousness. Uh, speaking about uh, pure bhakti, or Uttama Bhakti, uh, Rupa Goswami says that this is uh, faith, Shraddha, which makes one eligible. That's from uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And he, he, this is a verse by Rupa Goswami, Yakena Pyati Bhagyena, Jata Shraddho Asya Sevane, Nati Sakto Navairagya Bhag, Asyam Adhikarya Sau. So, so he's uh, saying that. A person is an adhikari for, for bhakti in the context of bhakti Sandhya Sindhu he speaks about sadhana bhakti but it's uh, you know you, you can't just you know it, it's equally applicable to, to devotional service in any okay, well, when we start devotional service we start with sadhana anyway so so an adhikari is one who by extreme by some extreme fortune uh, has Shraddha in him for serving the Lord Jata Shraddha so Shraddha as we say faith uh, faith faith it uh, shows itself as uh, a number of things 
we usually tend to think of faith as, as belief in something or believe in something uh, uh, but uh, it's not just belief belief it, it is there belief yes person believes that yes there is a supreme being and and if I serve him it's it's uh, for my well-being it's auspicious for me so therefore I should do it uh, but at the same time uh, then faith manifests as as a attraction and uh, as an interest curiosity to some degree yes uh, but even more so uh, as an attraction for a certain activity you are attracted to certain activity because you believe in that activity that if you engage in it it will uh, bring you some enjoyable results yeah attraction interest so these are all uh, you can uh, say uh, manifestations of faith further how practically it manifests you're not just I believe but, but how what does it practically mean you believe okay so that that's clear and uh, how does it happen that such a that such a desire such an attraction and faith develops because uh, say yeah cannot yet by some extreme of fortune and uh, it is explained what is that extreme fortune the extreme fortune uh, or yeah it, it is a <laughs> of course uh, association is brought about by association with devotees so that this is what makes our great fortune that we at some point of time we have be become attracted to this process it is some kind of uh, um, service and or association or mercy or blessing from from a devotee so that that creates a, a, a sanskara Jiva Goswami says sanskara vishesha specific sanskara in the heart uh, that makes it possible for a person to become attracted and uh, very difficult to understand how it works uh, technically but it is a fact you do, you do, a person does something for a devotee a person somehow associates from a devotee a devotee speaks some words uh, of Krishna consciousness to some person who has no idea about it and then the person is uh, uh, it is infected and then the next time a uh, person comes in contact with something related to Krishna person fe feels some attraction he can't explain why he can't explain uh, rationally doesn't even think about it he just propelled by that attraction and he he's uh, pursuing further his Krishna consciousness so even though it's uh, the beginning of Krishna consciousness for a person is, is quite impulsive we are very impulsively drawn towards Krishna but it has its it has its beginning in the form of uh, association with Vaishnava so then uh, that attraction is there and the person pursues Krishna consciousness and seeks for for you know some ways he can he engage himself then uh, uh, it is said also the same definition of about the adhikari for pure devotional service is uh, you know the other two lines says nati sakto navairagya bhag so the person should be not overly attached and neither overly detached <laughs> that person is qualified for bhakti so if person is overly attached in other words too much attached to sense gratification or uh, then uh, it would disqualify him from bhakti uh, his heart will not uh, be uh, properly tuned to perform devotional service so then 
the person become, you know, a karmi, we call a karmi. But uh, if a person is overly detached, vairagya, too much vairagya, then also devotional service will not uh, happen. Too much vairagya, too much detachment. Person will tend to jnana, and person will tend to seek uh, liberation. And devotional service shouldn't be shouldn't be tainted by these two traits. Too much attachment, too much. I'm, I'm sorry, this it's not proper to keep uh, hands in an impure place, which is like our mouth. So if we can, yeah. And uh, too much detachment, too much attachment tends to distract a person from devotion. And uh, a uh, person might uh, like to uh, rather escape the difficulties. For example, in case of uh, detachment, yeah, desire for mukti, it can it can influence on devotional service in many ways, uh, and. Uh, Here, Srila Prabhupada particularly dis discusses those who want to retire from activities. This, is, this might be a trace of that... Um, trace of that contamination. And why does it happen? Is that... Uh, this, this is a very nice sentence. Foolish persons or neophytes in Krishna consciousness often want to retire from activities without having knowledge of Krishna consciousness. So, one who has not realized what is Krishna consciousness may be swayed to, to uh, that type of uh, consciousness, uh, desire for, for so-called retirement. Retirement in the sense, I just want to I just want nobody bothers me. I just want to just wanna be by myself and just uh, I don't want any troubles. Yeah, and uh, and all, all this is coated with the with the so-called uh, uh, show of bhajan, and that is this was condemned by our recent acharya, Bhakti uh, Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. He says. Um, Nirjanera Gore, Tua Harinam Kebala Kaito. Your Harinam is just Kebala Kaito. It's just cheating. Uh, forgot the first line. He said, you, you wish to sit in the Nirjana, in a, in a solitary place, doing your Harinam, but it is all cheating, he says. Specifically, it's, it specifically applies nowadays as well. Because uh, who has the qualification for a solitary bhajan anyway? Uh, only rare souls. Yeah. And even then, even then, the call of the age is to uh, preach the message of Lord Chaitanya. So anyway, uh, there might be few who have been uh, who have been uh, uh, blessed by their spiritual masters to perform solitary bhajan, but the general trend is to anyway to um, engage in all sorts of activities uh, following the principle of yukta vairagya and preach Krishna consciousness uh, to everybody. So, so, so anyway, uh, that so-called retirement. Uh, or when people want some trouble, troubleless life is uh, and so-called, you know, doing so-called bhajan in that consciousness uh, is a 
quite a selfish uh, pursuit even though externally it looks quite uh, sublime and noble uh, but it's uh, it's a uh, there might be a manifestation of a uh, subtle selfishness and uh, this is for want of knowledge of Krishna consciousness because if you see uh, what is actually Krishna consciousness you have to open the Bhagavatam or Krishna book or Chaitanya Chaitanya and anyway and look at the look at what what actually is going on in the spiritual world um, you read Krishna Lila and you will see that uh, you know everything all the activities uh, all the persons who are there with Krishna his associates nobody is trying to uh, you know run away from troubles and in, in one sense uh, every pastime is full of so many troubles uh, and devotees are full of anxieties for Krishna so if you are, if you are too if your if your desire is for mukti, you want uh, seek her. You will you will not be ultimately attracted to the spiritual world because this is not what uh, people who want mukti want uh, desire. Huh? It is not it is not an anxiety free life. It is uh, very much full of anxieties. If you see all the pastimes. Uh, yeah, Lord Ramachandra's Leela and Brajavasi's so many demons come, coming constantly threatening Krishna and uh, you know they're on the verge of uh, leaving their bodies due to, due to anxiety for Krishna <laughs> and this is the perfection of existence <laughs> so 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 if you if you want to become you will become perfect one day, and uh, in that stage state of perfection, you will sometimes nearly uh, nearly die because you will be so much anxious for Krishna's safety. So so the state of uh, perfection of Krishna consciousness is very very different from the state of. Uh, Existence, which is seeked after by uh, by those who want simply liberation. Yeah. So <clears throat> constant hearing about Krishna from authorized sources is the remedy because it it will dispel our misconceptions about what is the ultimate goal uh, what, what is uh, the uh, what is the prayojana what are we uh, working for what are we trying to attain by our sadhana so uh, there are so many misconceptions and so many attachments in in our heart that we that they are so subtle that we are practically not aware of them uh, we, are, we might not be even conscious of them they are so much ingrained in, in our consciousness that we simply act on them yeah. unconsciously impelled by those uh, various uh, attachments and repulsions on the mental platform so constant hearing of Krishna Katha uh, gradually dispels all those misconceptions. Yeah. So that that should be always there. The process of Shravanam. We should always strive to purify our understanding of Krishna consciousness um, and uh, really understand what what does it mean, uh, Krishna consciousness. What does it mean? what it is Prema Bhakti what it, what it actually entails huh? 
So all these things have to be understood and uh, uh, so that one actually achieves the 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 goal, which is pure devotional service, prema bhakti. Otherwise, bhakti has many uh, uh, gradations as well, and uh, they are analyzed and described in the books. And we should uh, be very discriminative, and we should know. Uh, what are those different gradations? We are constantly being uh, urged by Srila Prabhupada to perform pure devotional service. And this is, uh, in the line of the Acharyas, this is what we are taught. Uh, pure devotional service can be called by different names. Ananya Bhakti, Kevala Bhakti, Para Bhakti, Uttama Bhakti, so many, they all describe, describe one and the same thing. But there is also Mishra Bhakti, there is also devotional service which is mixed with different uh, side things. And there is Karma Mishra Bhakti and there is also Jnana Mishra Bhakti. They are, they are also devotional service, these, these things. Yeah, there is also bhakti, they are also bhakti, but but they are not kevala, they are not pure. They are mishri, they're they're mixed with some degree of selfishness. Yeah. And there is also karma mishra bhakti, but there is also karma yoga. Yeah. Bhakti Mishra Karma. So what makes the two different? Bhakti Mishra Karma and Karma Mishra Bhakti. Just uh, put the words in a different position. But you get the very different states of consciousness. When we perform certain activity for our own uh, desire, and then offer it to the Lord. This is karma, yoga, or you can call bhakti mishra karma because actual karma yoga has to be mixed with bhakti, otherwise it will not yield any result. And then, so the first comes your own thing, your own purpose, your own desire. Then comes the element of offering. We are okay, I understand. I should share with the Supreme Being. Yeah? And there is an element of offering. Okay? But bhakti is even before you do something, you already offer it. You already offer it, including yourself. That's the difference. That I, I'm not doing it for myself from the very from the very first place from the very beginning. You never think that there's some kind of thing like as my desire or my purpose. Uh, you know, I I do not belong even to myself. And then what to speak of my activities, my speech, my thoughts, anything. So so in bhakti first comes first comes the offering. Then comes the activity, and you know it's, it's already offered from the very outset. This is bhakti. But then one might still have certain uh, habit, certain subtle attachment that yes, I like I like to serve Krishna, but like, and I, I, I you know, and the person is a devotee, but he he's attached to serve Krishna in a on a, in, a, in a particular way, yet with a, in a, only in that particular activity or some, you know, 
So there might be some subtle attachment. So then you call it karma mishra bhakti or jnana mishra bhakti. But but it's already it, it is a bhakti. It is bhakti. And then it comes only time with time person becomes purified from those subtle mm, contaminations and then one executes kevala bhakti which has no any which has no any mm, desire for any personal mm, enjoyment and any personal attachment it has no any traits of that so this is pure devotional service and therefore uh, it's not we should not take it for granted that once initiated we are already on the on the platform of Kevala Bhakti or pure Bhakti and bus that's it it's and we are devotees that's all put a put a stamp in the form of tilak on your forehead and that's it uh, it's all done we count ourselves as you devotee something no devotion devotional service is a is a and surrender is a is an ongoing process it uh, it happens every second every breath so at every moment we should uh, resurrender ourselves Inici the process of initiation is just the beginning and the person gives himself fully offers himself at the feet of his spiritual master it's just the beginning okay you did it once okay now you do it every moment and it's not that every moment you'll be successful so so it's uh, so we therefore we have to we have to become realistic and see that uh, we are simply aspiring to be to be de to perform pure devotional service we are aspiring for that sometimes we are successful sometimes we are not that's the that's the point we are we are simply practicing we are trying our best huh? with a relative success maybe so uh, Here Srila Prabhupada discusses this point of retirement as Arjuna wants to retire from uh, the battlefield and you know, uh, adopt uh, the garb of a renunciate actually that's what he proposed it was understated or it was kind of uh, in between the lines yeah he had it in his mind and Krishna could read his mind what he wants to do by all means Krishna pushed him to act and fight and some of the reasons that Krishna gave were not purely transcendental reasons they were uh, reasons of uh, come on you know they'll, if you go they'll, they'll just call you bad names you know you fight you know, for a Kshatriya there is uh, it's like it's like a death if somebody calls him the bad name. Yeah? Was that Marana uh, Matiricheta? It's worse than death. So it's kind of from the even from the platform of Ahankar, Krishna urged the Arjuna to fight. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. By the way, I'm Kshatriya. I don't want anybody to tell me I'm a I'm a eunuch or something. You know, that's the worst thing. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, there are other from other from different other platforms. Also, Krishna urges Arjuna to fight. Also, from the platform of karma, yeah. But ultimately, Krishna Krishna's ultimate urge is that Arjuna, you fight because this is my desire. You fight. This is ultimate. Uh, uh, reason not because uh, you know if you don't fight they'll call you bad names so therefore you better fight otherwise 
that's one thing. It might work out for some people, yeah, but but then ultimately, manmana bhava mad bhakto, yeah, ananyas chintayanto mam, so unalloyed, yeah, yatecha sita thakuru, no, 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 but that's um, in the 18th chapter, yeah. Uh, when Arjuna says, mm, "I'll act as you wish," yeah, and this is, this is a, he got the point, yeah, like as you wish. Yeah. So we might be, um, how to say, uh, urged to act in Krishna consciousness to be active uh, but uh, the, the, the ultimate uh, reason why we are doing certain things should be we should always uh, look inside and see our motivation why why are why are we doing what we are doing yeah what is my motivation am I doing it just so that I could uh, you know uh, be free from troubles or I'm doing it to please Krishna and to please my Guru so so we should always look inside and see what is our motivation what what urges us to act mm -hmm. and uh, it's a very healthy uh, kind of a check to be done regularly so uh, so Arjuna was advised to act by Krishna following in the footsteps of his uh, of Krishna's previous disciples like uh, such as the Sun God so Krishna mentioned the Sun God in the beginning of the chapter yeah. so so the, he said you should you should act just as they did and they were liberated so they were liberated and they were still acting so action is not against the principle of being liberated uh, that's Krishna's point. Therefore, you act, don't be afraid of acting. One can act on liberated platform as well. So, just as one, you know, the action in itself is not a bad thing. It's just uh, what, what the quality of action is what one has to look at. Mm. Usually actions in are painful because they bring sufferings, but that does not mean that actions uh, should be stopped, like like a diseased part of body. Yeah, I mean, you may have some you know liver problem and you, you feel pain, so then you may you may remove your liver, so then you won't live for long. But then the solution is to cure or an eye, you have cataract in your eye so it doesn't function properly, brings trouble the solution is to to cure it and then the eye will uh, function in its healthy state uh, so in the same way the activity uh, those who want liberation, they are afraid of activities because all they know is material activity which brings uh, karma, which brings sufferings and therefore they try to avoid activities but uh, pure activity uh, that, that's why hearing is so important you have to be, hear about the pure activities of those who are on the liberated platform therefore you should hear Srimad Bhagavatam, you should hear Chaitanya Charitamrita then we will understand that oh these are pure activities character of the living force in immortality that's the um, understanding of the words Chaitanya Charitamrita that's another meaning, okay one thing you can understand, okay the nectarian activities of Lord Chaitanya but then if you go in you know, another meaning, if you look at try to derive the, the meanings of the words in another way, yeah. Chaitanya means living force. Or Jiva, one who has Chaitanya, who has conscious, the conscious being. 
Charitamrita. Yeah, the, in, the character of living force and immortality. So this is the character of li living force in immortality. Uh, and then you read Chaitanya Charitamrita. That's what they do. Associates of Lord Chaitanya. This is all transcendental and eternal. Uh, they do it eternally. They're not bored of that. So, <coughs> so therefore the activity in itself is, is not a problem. It's just how you do it, with which consciousness. And uh, Krishna is urging Arjuna to follow the previous authorities um, and act uh, with this understanding. Uh, which understanding? what Krishna has just spoken in the beginning of the fourth chapter. Krishna for the first time in the Bhagavad Gita uh, speaks about his transcendental nature here. Beginning from the first uh, from the first verses of this fourth chapter. So with this understanding you should act, Krishna says. And this is very important here. The same, the same action might be performed uh, without this understanding and it will bring different results. But if it's pre performed with the understanding of Krishna, then it will result in uh, liberation. And more than that, it will uh, help one to achieve pure devotional service. So, so understanding is what's important. And this is all uh, the whole point of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, it's not so much about the externals, but about the uh, motivations, about the understanding. And this is what makes the difference uh, uh, just... Uh, yeah, this is what makes the difference. Uh, Krishna conscious person will, is able to be happy in any condition of life because he has pure understanding and on account of that pure understanding his actions are also pure and therefore in any condition of life Krishna conscious person is simply blissful yeah there is nothing that can make him unhappy yeah. On the other hand, those who have no, uh, not attained 100% Krishna consciousness, there will always be something external troubling them. Yeah. So therefore, this is the secret of happiness. It just become Krishna conscious, and then your happiness doesn't depend on anything external. Yeah. So. You'll be happy as a king, and you'll be happy as a poor man. Yeah, it won't matter much. Yeah. And it's hard to understand uh, this type of uh, consciousness because we are always uh, being, uh, you know, the outside world. Uh, bombarded with that materialistic propaganda is that happiness depends on on the external world around you therefore you just adjust a little bit and then you'll be happy but then it doesn't happen <laughs> so therefore we should rather mm, see uh, look at our consciousness at the condition of our mind because that's the that's where uh, the actual uh, perception happen is happening is the mind so if it's pure Krishna conscious mind it will reflect the nature of it will reflect the soul yeah? so that it's like a mirror of consciousness it will reflect pure soul and if the mind is not pure it will not reflect our eternal nature. It will uh, 
pervert the actual image and then uh, the person is bewildered so we <coughs> in that way uh, Bhagavad Gita teaches us to mm, develop to develop proper understanding and then uh, that understanding uh, has to be applied in action yeah. so it, it's a it's a, it's a, you know, it's a lifetime of study and application so if anyone has any questions or any comments